Welcome everybody, welcome back to the channel. I hope you're enjoying the videos that have been coming recently during this time in quarantine. Um, I put out a few questions on my Instagram asking you guys what you guys want next and hands came up, how to draw hands. Now as an artist, we all know how incredibly annoying hands can be at times, so I'm actually happy to be here to show you guys how I break down hands. And if you've been following me for a while, I draw hands a lot with my characters. For me, I think face and hands are the most important element to give your character a lot of dynamic, especially mine. That's not everyone, but especially for my characters. So yeah, I'll stop talking now and show you guys how I break down hands. Okay guys, so when I'm drawing a hand, um, I like to break it into different shapes. The first shape we're going to start off with is just draw yourself a rectangle. Kind of similar to, like, to this. And the first thing I'm going to attach to this rectangle is a triangular shape. Just here. Putting the shape in here just indicates to me where the thumb's going to be. Obviously the, the palm is facing upwards, I'm going to sort of have it like this. So this is the upside of the, the hand. And just give that a small indication of where the thumb is. And that's how I'm going to start off with this hand. The first thing I'm going to start off with is from the thumb is this finger here. So across the palm, I might have it bent up a little bit. Actually, let's just have it facing straight actually. Just for the sake of the tutorial is I draw another smaller rectangle shape here. Almost like a tube, a tubular shape. Now because there's obviously the bend in the finger, I'm just going to add another tubular shape again. And as you can see it's starting to come along nicely now already. Now back to the original the original shape, the original rectangle we drew. I like to put this a small indication here. So it's like the fold of the fingers. And let's say we just have the two fingers like this for now. I'll just show you guys how to draw different types of hands. Just so you get a basic understanding of how I'm breaking it down. So I just might throw another rectangle here. And once again, literally just the same as the first finger. Another rectangle. And um, where this is coming coming down this line, I'm gonna have it so the fingers are sort of almost like this, so that these two fingers you're not gonna see as much. So if you think of this as a three-dimensional shape, anything falling from here is gonna go inwards towards the drawing, and that way it give it bring these fingers more forward and plus push these back, giving it more of a realistic look. So from here I put a little bit of a curve on that last line and pull one shape in there, like this and maybe put in the second line here and there. And now this is just the basic, okay? So don't worry about specifics here. We're not going to think every finger has to be perfect because a hand can change its angles and it'll still make a lot of sense. So don't get tied up and worried about, oh, the fingers aren't in the right place, whatever. So here I'm just gonna go over the lines and pick up the shapes I want from the rough sketch. So I like the way that brings in similar to this, I might make it a bit shorter. Now I like this, I feel like this finger here can be pushed out a bit more, so I'm just going to go using the original shapes as a rough guide. I also add like a little, a little upward dip thing here to indicate the fold in the finger. It's quite animated, the style is quite animated, not super realistic. Add another knuckle and bring that back. And then using this, follow the original lines, hide in place with the thumb. And the same goes for this finger. I'll actually keep this one the same.
And there we have it guys, first example of a type of hand you can draw. Okay, now you're probably thinking, well done Sotep, you, sure, you showed me how to draw one hand from one certain angle. You're a genius, that's really going to come in handy. But don't be too beaten down on yourself. Because using the same principle I showed you there, of using the rectangle, triangle, rectangle, your possibilities are endless, okay? So, using the exact same process, I'm going to show you how this works, I'm going to draw a second hand, the same process, okay? So just all you have to remember is rectangle, triangle, rectangle. Pow. Okay. So getting into the second hand. So okay, next hand. Start off again. Um, just for a square. I don't even know how this one's going to turn out. So let's have a face upwards. You've got your base rectangle shape once again. Uh, from here, let's say it's open, so the palm's here, and I'm just going to draw the triangle shape here. So that's the thumb here, it's going to come just fit into here, and then I'm going to draw a rectangle shape once again this way. Just like that. There's no real curves in it yet, it's just facing that way. From there we're going to shoot straight up back to the rectangle and think about the first rectangle place placement which will be here let's do that like Buddha sign people do you know that whole like home so rectangle here second rectangle will be next to it then form these two I'll just do two rectangles in one because I'm an OG boom Straight away, you can see where this is going already, and I'm not worrying about the specifics too much. I'm not stressing, oh, the little curvatures in the fingers, or the little wrinkles here. Forget all that. We're just breaking down big rectangle, triangle, smaller rectangles. Now, these two fingers are going to be turned in. So, think about the fold, and the first rectangle maybe about there. Maybe, maybe not, but it looks correct. Second rectangle, tucked away, there. Now from here, you can almost see the fold happening naturally. So I might just give a small indication of pull it back a tiny bit and then use that as a folding point. Bang. And then you could even, some people might even argue, oh I like that style, I like that blocky style and a few artists out there that use that, like uh, there's an artist called Clog2. Sometimes his hands are just blocky but they look so good with a few indications of the hands or the gloves. But from here, I'm just gonna actually make it more animated and sort of bend out and flick it in. But this is your own style. If you think nah, that, that looks trash, I don't want that. Don't add it. <laughs> it's your. It's yours. I'm just here to show you how how I'm gonna break down each process. Okay, so here we go again. Once you're happy with the base, the base shapes, I would normally use this rectangle. Follow that line. Add a little dip here for the the bend in the finger, and shoot straight back up and a dip here too just use a lot of dips a lot of smaller triangles now to indicate movement and it should fold about there and the actual good thing about hands is everyone has different hands so there's no actual 100% correct or wrong way to do it as long as the form makes sense the basic shapes are down like this you can do whatever you want then you can do whatever just follow the basic guide Follow that down, might change it a little bit, and I want that thumb protruding out. So yeah, I'm just gonna just gonna play with this thumb, bring that down, the base triangle, I'm going to have actually have this a bit more three dimension so I'm going to add this little uh, broken moon shape here and it gives it an indication that it's sort of folding it up yeah there we go and just shade down from there and then these two shapes here once again follow that line The good thing with the shapes in the back here, I can always just put that in complete shade and darkness. 
and from there shade round just gives that dimension again and the same goes for this back can just be an indication just so the eye has an indication okay the fingers are folding and down again now this is very blocky it's almost just I've literally almost followed the basic shapes which is something you have to do you can add a few more a few more details and yeah, just point that shape out here once again. Have that fold in. An indication of where the arm's going to be. And now, once you've got the basic down. Any level of shading you want to take it will just give it way more dimension. So this is where you might actually want to go and study real life. Well, not you should just study real life. Then you get a, a stronger point of shades of the fingers, um, how things fall into place. Just once you get a solid sort of understanding of how the basic shapes go in real life, you can then manipulate it in a different style. Like this here, this is this is how I draw hands in my style, and obviously this would develop through years and change. But I really hope you just grasp the basics of putting in your basic shapes first, and then from there build upon it like you're sculpting the hands. Don't the thing people mess up with—they go so much on the detail, they focus on the, the smaller details that you almost end up rubbing everything out. You put in one finger, and that looks correct, but the next thing is out of place. But if you just throw the structure in place first, so I'm throwing my my square and my rectangles. From there, I judge whether it's correct or not, and once it's correct, go over it. Okay, guys, that's the that's the second hand done. Um, let me show you. I draw another one just to so get a, just so it's like drawn to your head exactly how it's being done. Um, I just want it a bit quicker. So once again, rectangle, let's just bend that rectangle, who knows what shape it will be at the end. Um, let's just say the thumb's hidden now by the palm, the thumb's actually being hidden, rectangle, and then from here, a rectangle, another rectangle, and this is actually, <laughs> this is actually quite a cool trick, is if you want the the other fingers angled away so they're not all pointing out but they're more like this so you're actually away um, you want to imagine this being brought in like this like a triangle shape so when that knuckle comes up just follow that line and because each finger is different is different in length just ladder it down ladder 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 And then let's say we bring it up. That will have a cook bend and then ladder. And that's once you've got the technique down, that's literally how fast you can do a hand. Is just rectangle, rectangle, boom. Now because I want to actually have this hand as a bend, I'm gonna throw that rectangle and break it there. Break. Now this sort of hand would be cool if let's say he was like pit there, like holding some sort of gun. That's very violent, but stay with me. Don't be drawing guns. <laughs> Keep it positive, man. Keep it positive. But yeah, for for example shit, for example, I just maybe bend that rectangle back in. So yeah, I might cut the triggers there. I then pit it out and bend it in. And once again, that you saw how quick that was. That was just one rectangle. I didn't put a thumb into that one, and it makes perfect sense. So yeah, I'm just going to speed up again, and then show you the final result and talk you through, talk you through it. There we go, guys. That's like another example. It's actually quite cool to actually be able to throw an example where he's holding something. Um, and yeah, that's basically all I can teach to show you this. I'll show you one more example, and let's see why not. I mean, 
don't know how long this video is going to be, but if you sat through it, congratulations, and I hope you actually took something from this. Let me try and draw a hand this time, and I want to try and give it a bend the perspective a little bit, because once you get the basics down, um, you can actually start bending a lot more perspective, so the fingers are coming out, um, and this all is just playing on the first foundation lesson I just gave you. So, let's say once again, you know what you're going to start off with, a rectangle. But this time, I'm going to skew the corners, so bang, bang, still a rectangle. And kind of imagine it is sitting in a sitting in a cube. There we go, a beautiful cube. Um, and with the fingers, I'm just going to draw a guideline up here. Bang. Now from there, triangle once again. I want to have the thumb coming out towards you guys, facing you guys. So, triangle. Kinda. That's kind of like a rectangle, but <laughs> triangle. And then, yeah, rectangle. Because the thumb sort of sat in the central line here, the perspective isn't going to be bending too too crazy on that right now. So it's just sort of sat there, following the guide I put in the first place. Okay, I'm actually going to bring this this little down a bit. And from here. I'm just going to put the rectangles back in place until they touch this guide or somewhere around this guide. So, first, oh yeah, if that's if that's the guide there, I'll put a second guide because then the fingers are in two parts. So it's two two rectangles. Rectangle one, rectangle two. Bang! Straight back to the palm, and then again, rectangle one, rectangle two. Just starts to start to flow, and then there's a central point for that cube line again. Rectangle one, rectangle two. You're starting to see the pattern now, and following that guide. And from the last, I'm just going to have rectangle one, and just skew it off a little bit. Okay, we've hit a fold there. And following this basic line, I'm just gonna fit that in. Bam, bam. Now there's a few. There's a f the error here is obviously with the cubes. I just chucked them in there. Is the thickness of it? Some like that's thick, that's thin, and so on. That's the error. But this is because it's rough. There is no errors. When it's just a rough sketch, there is no error. It's in place. There's a sculpture here. And now from this point. I just indicate all the key lines I want to keep and which ones I want to drop. So, let's say the thumb. Go around the thumb. Maybe add a bit more of a curve on it. And down. And just, I might just shoot it straight back into the palm. Bam. Straight back in. Okay, you see this is a cool curve line here, which I actually really like. So I'm actually just going to stick with that, but curve it more. So render it that way. And bring it back to the palm and then similar to the other hands I'm just gonna go over my initial sculpted lines like finger one finger two Finger three. And finger four. Bring that in, bend that back, push that. The thing that's really gonna give it a lot more dimension is putting in the is the shading once again. Placing in the shading. So yeah guys, I'm just going to go over this once again, time lapse it, and I'll show you the end result. And there we have
have it guys, that's four examples of how to draw hands. Like I said, rectangle, triangle, smaller rectangles. Once you sculpt it in place, then finalize it up and pin it in your final lines. Um, I really hope you actually gain the lesson. If one of you, one people out there actually resonated with this and took away a lesson, then honestly that makes me so happy. And I'm really happy to make these videos for you guys. I'm in quarantine with you guys and creating these gives me so much purpose and I, I love to share and stuff. But these are the four main examples and seeing as we're all learning and studying together, I'm going to continue the process in time lapse and just draw a whole sheet of hands which I then leave as a PDF for you guys so you can have a look maybe trace a few to get a better understanding and yeah let's just do this together let's jump straight back into the time lapse Right guys, that is the end of this lesson. I really hope that you managed to take something from it. I just thought I'd carry on here and just draw an array of hands so you can see the process being repeated again and again and again. Like I said, it's just always practice. Just repeat this process again and before you know it, you'll be mastering hands like no man's business. Um, I'm gonna link a PDF to this here in case you wanted to print it off or maybe even just trace these hands and use them for your own characters, do whatever you want with them. Um, any questions like always leave me a comment in the section below and i'll reply to you and a massive thank you to everyone who's been supporting me on patreon i'll also leave a link to that in my description we have a few other things to my instagram and what have you but yeah as always love bringing you this content you want to see anything else let me know stay safe at this time much love and peace till next time take care guys